Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today's video is a request from Warren on the subject of Advanced Charging Controller Magisk Module. Now what does this do? Well if I can summarize just the functionality, it allows you to set some conditions of which the battery charging is controlled by and you can configure from a variety of different conditions, hopefully with the goal of increasing the lifespan of your battery and not your day-to-day -day battery life. So please read more about the functions, installation and configuration on the GitHub page right here. It all seems very well documented here, so I'm sure you have no problems following along and reading this stuff. Uh, but please also note that not all functions can work on every device due to hardware differences. And there's also a chance that if you do decide to misuse this, your device can become permanently damaged and in extreme cases may even hurt you. So please be careful of what you do with this module. And by continuing, the developer of this module and myself are not responsible for any damages caused due to the use of this module. And in this video, I'll be going over installation and different ways of configuring it, and also some simple sample configurations. And I believe the rest is in your best interest to actually go about reading the description and reading what the functions do and what you can do with the um, Magisk module, or in this case, the command line program that it installs systemlessly. So installation is quite simple. All you need to do is head over to your device, and I presume you're rooted with Magisk. And all you need to do is open up the Magisk Manager, swipe open to the uh, hamburger menu, and then tap on Downloads. This is where you download all your modules. You might be familiar with this already. And all you need to do is type in the name of the module. So I'll just type the whole thing in. Advanced. Oops. Can't spell. Well, once I type in Advanced, you can see it is the second option here. And you can just tap on the little download icon and then tap on install and allow permissions if you need to and you should see it downloading over here and it's finished. So we get this uh, little line here, if I can just zoom in hopefully it's still in focus but it says here uh, it's going to install, setting permissions and it's also saying that the Magisk version hasn't been tested by I guess the original developer so you will need to report I think to another person or in the XDA thread that I'll link down below of any problems and then also it tells you what's new and you can close this and we also should wait a few minutes for the background processes to finish uh, before we restart our phone and here um, there are some telegram groups as well if you want to join that and different links and I think you can also find this on the github page if I just quickly switch over to that near the bottom you can find the same links here as well. So once the installation has finished, I think we should just you know give it a few minutes. So I'm just going to leave it on this screen for a little bit. And from there we can just reboot our phone after a couple minutes, as instructed down here. Okay, so once your phone has turned back on, now is the time to configure the ACC uh, module or daemon. And from here, we can choose two different ways of doing it. So either you can download a terminal emulator like Termux on your phone. I highly recommend this one. Uh, it's very small and it has a lot of functionality that you can do and even has its own package manager. So when you download Termux, it will have to set up and initialize. So just give that a sec. And this is pretty much like using ADB shell on your phone. Now, of course, the screen is very small. I think you can zoom in. You can, uh, but I'll be doing the remainder of this on my computer. But just to show you how to do it on a terminal emulator, you will need to open it up and then you'll need to type in su to get into root mode. And you'll also need to accept the super user request. And then you'll see a little hashtag here and then see the path that is very long, which is the data file folder for Termux. And from here you can type in ACC, advanced uh, charging thingo. And then for example, one of the uh, parameters or flags is I for info and that'll print out the info so you can see it working here just fine so you can see all of the uh, the current information about your battery now if you don't want to do it on such a small screen or you prefer typing on a keyboard like I do you can actually head over to your computer and I'll just leave both phones up or screens up I should say I'll just go back home what you can do is open up a terminal or console and let's just go back to this page here with all the configurations and I guess usage of it. Now if we go here and we use ADB, so we can type in ADB shell, hit enter, and I might need to accept, I have to wait for the daemon to start my computer, 
and I might have to accept something about the RSA fingerprint on my phone. Okay, I don't have to, which is good. And I type in SU, same thing, and I also need to accept the super user request for the shell on my phone, like so. And now I can get rid of the phone. And from here, we can just uh, type in the same commands as we did. So for example, ACC uh, dash I will bring, bring us the info for the phone. So you can see all this good stuff here. So from now, you can either do it on your phone or on your computer, and it'll be the same thing, more or less. There also turns out to be an app created by an individual here, obviously a fan of ACC. And basically this is pretty much a, an app that allows you to configure the settings of ACC as well as starting and stopping the daemon. So if the command line is not exactly your cup of tea, although for many people it might be, uh, this is something that you can also download and check out. So I'm going to install this on my phone and then we're going to have a look at it briefly. Okay, so let's have a look at the app now. You can allow access to the stuff and grant it root access. So you can uh, see all the info in real time, start and stop the daemon here, and you can also get the log from up there. Uh, sorry about the lighting, I did have to change a little bit. And here are some more configurations. So the on boot value, uh, you'll have to look at the documentation to see what to put there. And you can also change the shutdown at, charging, uh, resume at and stop charging at and then down here you can also ooh, change the temperature check I think that was on 40 and the max temperature that can go up to kind of thing and so and the cooldown temperature and the pause in between that and you can also get the battery settings so this is pretty much my goodness <laughs> this is pretty much all the configuration items that you can do uh, from within ACC and also the cooldown here. So start cooling down and the seconds here as well. So if you don't want to use the terminal to edit it, this app looks like it'll do the job just fine. And a link to that is also down in the more info below. And now for some sample configuration. So let's see what the current configuration is. And we can do that by typing in. We can use just the dash S flag, or the set flag. Uh, so we can type in ACC-S and that'll print off the configuration. And you can see here, if we just scroll down to what the capacity means, so these percentages here, so 5, 60, and 70 to 80, uh, this will represent the shutdown, cooldown, and resume to pause ratio. So currently at 5%, it will turn off our phone uh, safely. At 60%, it will start its cooldown kind of function. And then over here, uh, 70 to 80 will means that at 70% your phone will start charging and then at 80% it will stop or above 80. So you can actually see on my phone if I just show you real quick. Uh, my home button isn't working so it might be a bit weird but you can see that I'm on 88% right now and you know the cable was plugged in and still is and before I installed the module it was charging when I plugged it into the computer but now you can see that it is above 88% and it's not charging anymore. So you can see that this module is already working in effect. And I think the last thing we'll look at is uh, some of the profiles that it includes here. So you can see here with dash S, I know it's a bit zoomed out, but um, this one actually can be a few different things. So you can either put in the number or you can put in the text equivalent of it. And this is uh, very interesting. So these are different profiles for battery endurance or uh, I guess the capacity or cooldown temperature related things. So these are just pretty much presets for the configurations, I believe. So for example, if we want to set one for those who are using the GPS a lot, we can do uh, ACC-S and then you can put in a number here. So they say in the guide here, the lithium ion sweet spot, best for GPS navigation and long operations. So that is the endurance plus. Now, if you don't want to type in endurance plus, you can type in 4041. So I'm going to do that, and that will set that. And if I just look at the settings again, which should be just ACC-S, you can see how it's changed a little here. So the shutdown is still at 5, and at 60%, it will start the cooldown thing if the temperature hasn't done so already, allow that to set in. And then you can see the pause and charge uh, battery percentages of 40 to 41. So it'll keep it within 1%, 40 and 41%. Now has the temperatures changed? Nope. 
and nothing else has changed except for the capacity. So I think I believe probably most of it has to do with capacity. The rest of the functionality is probably up to you to kind of uh, tinker with more advanced options. And for example, one for travel, let's just have a look at that one. So I'm going to type in 1995. And if I do ACC-S, that'll print out what it's changed. And that'll keep us between 90 and 95, while everything else remains the same more or less. I believe it, I believe it does. So you can definitely have a look at this, play around with it, see what research you can come up with, or ones that suit your needs personally. I actually find that um, keeping it at 80% actually really diminishes your daily usage. Uh, in my own experience when I used to do this uh, with my Pixel 2, I guess it really boils down to how long you intend to keep your phone for. Um, for me, you know I go through some phones every year, so uh, this wouldn't really be too much for me. But if you're planning on keeping your phone for a long time, I reckon that this is probably you know hands-off kind of step, or at least try to increase the lifespan of your battery, or at the sacrifice of your daily use time. So you can just carry around a portable charger or something, uh, but then it will prolong your battery lifespan instead. So. I know this video wasn't very in-depth or could go over and explain what each of the functions do. Uh, I think that is simply because even myself am not too versed in this subject. Uh, I generally just use my phone. But this is something that is very interesting and can prove, and it probably is proven helpful in the long run if you so choose to use it. Of course, as I mentioned before, at the expense of your you know daily battery life, but then you get uh, exceptional battery health by the end of it. And if you have any questions, I reckon you should actually go to the XDA thread and leave it down here if you have any questions because I don't think I'll be able to answer them unless it's about installing Magisk or how to uninstall. Well, to uninstall it, you just remove the Magisk module because in this latest update, I believe it does actually kind of stop the ACC daemon and kind of reverts all the changes that it does. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, I hope this kind of gives you an insight to some, I guess, battery life prolonging tips in the long run, at least. So yeah, thanks for watching, and as always, happy flashing.